Good morning and happy Sabbath. It's a privilege for me to be back here in Yangon. Thank you for the privilege to invite me to come again and again. It's now the fifth time I'm here in uh, Myanmar. So it's almost five years since I first came here. And I hope I, you still remember when I was the first time here in Yangon. Anyone remembers? Someone remembers? Okay. Um, I know that I had a sermon in the morning here. And we spoke a whole week about health and life. And uh, we will try to do the same this week. Just that we will have the meetings in the evening. And I hope you invite uh, your neighbors and the sick people to come. The healthy people don't need God. Only the sick people. You agree with that? Now, if you're healthy, you don't need God. You think you live well on your own. But when people are sick, when they have headaches, or stomach pain, or they get dizzy, they remember that something is wrong. And so they might search for a help. And I think uh, we know where to search for the help. So tomorrow, this morning, is just, uh, I was thinking what to talk to you. And I do the title of this message is The Beauty of a Christian Character. So, what do you like about the Christian? If, uh, I don't know if, are the Adventists known in Myanmar quite well? If you would go on the street and ask, oh, how many Adventists, or you know the Adventist church, what would be the answer? Would they know us? Maybe some. Now you see, you live in a Buddhist-based country. You're so called the strangers around the others. But I come from Europe. And in Germany, or in all our Christians, Germany, and there is a strange thing happening in our Western world, so to say. And the strange thing is that people, instead of being attracted to Christians, run away from Christians. That's something strange, is it? I have in my practice many patients that I speak to them about God because they need God because they're sick. But they are not believers. They don't believe in God. You know why they don't believe in God? Most of them don't believe in God because they don't like the Christians. They 
They tell to me, don't, don't come to me with the, the God of the Christians. I don't like that God. In Germany, they might be inclined more to the God of the Buddhists than the God of the Christians. Why is that so? And I wonder, and I think it is because the Christians have not understood what Christianity is. <laughs> Because how would you go to a person if it is not an attractive person? Would you like to live with a person that uh, is unfaithful? Would you? Oh. Or you like to live with a person that is, has not uh, good order? Or you like to live with a person that is just, today he is happy and the next day he is very angry? Today he speaks nice, and uh, the next day he speaks bad. Would that be something you would be attractive to? You say, oh, this is heaven, yes? No. No one is attracted to something that is not Beautiful and nice. I so say generally. <laughs> However, how look should be a Christian that people that are around him like him? But let's get a little bit closer. The last time I spoke about family relationships. Anyone remembers from the man here what I, that we did the commitment? Anyone remembers the commitment that the man stood up and said they will do it from now on? It's two and a half years ago. <laughs> Still remember the commitment? Anyone remembers the commitment? <laughs> okay, okay, I know. I just will mention it. <laughs> if I remember well, the commitment was that men would be not angry anymore with their wives and their family. Still remember? They stood up and said, from now on, we will be the nicest person in the house. We won't get angry anymore on shouting to the children. No shouting to the wife. No voice that gets up. Just gentle, loving, long-suffering men. You like it? Ah, the woman, I think they like it. It's so important that we understand how are we in the home. Just uh, two weeks ago, uh, an Adventist lady called me on the phone. And she says she has a problem. She has a son that is 21 years old. And the son 
is addicted to games at the computer games. And issues here with games? Any issues or? So the mother and the father are quite desperate. They want their child to have self-control. Is it not important to have self-control? But I wonder, and I put this question, where did the child learn to not have self-control? Now, of course, we are born with a sinful nature and we have a tendency of having no self-control. But let me ask you, and I ask this lady and I ask everyone who calls me and has issues with addictions, do you who want to teach the other to be self-controlled, do you have it or not? Do you think the parents of children that have addiction issues are more controlled than their children or less controlled than their children? Have you understood the question? You see, mother and father want their child to be controlled, to not play so much games or not play at all. And they think of all the measurements they should take so that they get the child to control himself. Now, when the child is 21, how much can you do about it? Can you do much about it? Can you? Oh, it's, it's gone. With 21 or 18 or even 17, you're done. If you didn't teach it until then, no chance anymore. The only chance to do it even later is not by a parent but by a friend. But parents don't understand the time of education and when they have to do it. However, who is more in need of self-control, the parent or the child? What do you think? Parents. Oh, you're with me. So, so, first, the parents need to know themselves to control themselves, then they can expect the child should control themselves too. But if you have parents that are concerned about their children that have issues with addictions, and you see how they behave, for me it is like one who has no self-control, who wants to force the other, is wanting to help the one that has also no self-control. <laughs> Now, 
Can you teach something you don't know? You cannot exercise. Can you say, do that? Paul could say, follow me. How could he say that? He was a human. Because he learned in the school of Christ. The Christian must be so attractive that the child loves to be with the Christian. Do your children love to be around you? I mean, they have to. But do they like it? Do they like it? Or rather they say, oh, where is mom not home or father? And then happy to be alone. Are your parents the most attractive people in the world? Yes. I mean, you have to love them because you depend on them. But would you say your father is your best example and your mother is the most loving person? You see, this is our problem. That we are not an example that is beautiful and attractive. So do you think the parents of this boy for the boy are attractive? When, when mother comes to him to visit him, is he saying, Oh, nice mother, you come to me? What is he seeing in his mother? That loving, understanding face. Or is he saying, oh, you can play the games. How is mother? Oh, nice to see you, my son. No, no problem. I, I have full confidence. One day you will make it. Or is she afraid and say, when are you going to quit gaming? So what kind of a mother do you wish? One that understands. One that uh, uh, knows you will overcome your addiction. Or you will like a mother that says every day, Oh, how many hours did you spend on the computer? Which mother do you like more? I think it's obvious, even here in Myanmar. We always like those people who understand us. We like those people who are respecting our even bad choices. Can you respect the bad choices of your child? And do something about it without becoming like the devil. Remember, on Christmas, the family was home. Christmas, and we raised six foster children. 
And uh, we were remembering the past. And it was a few years ago in about 2008-2009. I had very strict rules in my house. So rules are good things, are they? And they need to be respected. No, there's nothing wrong in rules. So, since I'm a physician, I had the rule in the house that there is no allowing to drink coffee in the house. Now, the son, the second born was about 22, 23. And he got the coffee machine to fix it because it didn't work. And so, one Sabbath afternoon, we were having uh, some of the youth people who were sitting down with me and uh, in our living room. And some boys were up in his room. And I, s I don't know, I have a very sensitive <laughs> nose. And something smelled like coffee. And so I, I think also my wife told me that it comes from upstairs. So I ran, you know, you don't go slowly when you are in love, are you? <laughs> I ran up the stairs, entered in his room. You know which word I told him? When I saw him with the coffee in the hand, <laughs> he told it to me on oh, this Christmas, I forgot it. <laughs> I entered that room and I pointed to my finger towards him. I said, you are the devil. Who was the devil? Who was the devil? Who was the devil? Him or me? They say you. Oh yes, you agree with me. <laughs> so every time you shout to your children, <laughs> who is coming out? The love of Christ or the devil? Who is it? You see, there is something that I ask myself, why are we blind? Can a blind lead another blind? Yes or no? It's obvious for us. But you see, the church of God, that we are called Laodicea today, is blind. Is it? They say, they say that they are rich. And increased in goods. Lacking nothing. Lacking, lacking nothing. And what is their real state? They are poor. They are naked. They are blind. They are um, wretched. Well, it's wretched and miserable. So, something desirable? 
They think they're loving. They think they care. But in the end, they're just the opposite. So what makes the parents today blind? And why do they not see that they misbehave worse than their children? Why is it so? Why do they say to their children, you're the devil, when they are more like the devil than anyone else? How does it come? How does it come that the Christians that call themselves today Christians are more worse than maybe the other ones? This is a question that I really have in my heart. Because I think it's not possible that our children should become real Christians if their parents are not real Christians. And a real Christian has those things we read about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, loving, long-suffering. Any Christian here with long-suffering? When do you need long-suffering? As a parent, when the child obeys or when the child disobeys? When do you need it? When it is obeys, yes? When do you need meekness? When do you need self-control? When everything is fine around you? Yes? No. Then everyone can do it. You don't need the power of God for normal things. You just need the power of God for things that you cannot do. To be able to do them. So what would be the first thing if we have to counsel a Christian parents who needs to change first? Easy or hard? What is more probable to be changed, the son or the parents? You see, if you would be a parent, and you come to me as a counselor, because you have an issue with your child, and I will look to you. I <laughs> say, mm, we can fix the problem. No problem. If we fix you. The child would become self-controlled if you as a parent become self-controlled. That's the chance of the child. That's the chance even of an adult child. Is it easy? Easy? Do sometimes parents love me? Say, oh yes, I was waiting for this counsel. I come to you that you should help me to fix my son. And I say, yes, yes, I help you. But we need to fix first something else. 
Christianity will have no impact in this world if they live like the world. I came to understand that it doesn't matter outsidely uh, your behavior in good days. You can keep Sabbath and you can do whatever you want. If your spirit is not a soft one. If you're not a person that is kind and, and patient and long-suffering. Your religion is worth nothing. You might be right in all your theoretical teachings. But you will be wrong in your behavior and your life. You see, the blindness is there because you think in the right ideas is the right thing. And yes, we need also to behave a little bit better. But we do not see Christianity as a lifestyle of love. I just recently read a nice sentence where L.Y. says, Religion is love. Is that religion? Is that the religion of the Adventists? Are the Adventists the most loving and kind people on this earth? Yes? What can we say to the world? What impact shall we ever have if we are misbehaving in stressful situations exactly like the other ones? I suggest sometimes a test. And I would suggest it to you too to think about it. I don't know how many atheists you have here in this country. So, we have many in Europe. And they're getting more by the day it goes. But you know, even atheists know what is good and right, what is love and is not love. I think in every religion, everyone knows what is loving behavior and what is unloving behavior. Yes? So I would, I do this example in, in Germany and in Europe, but I would apply it now to the Myanmar culture. Let's say, in, in Germany I say, do this test. Invite an atheist to live with you for a week in your house. He should just watch you what you do. And after one week, he should give you a recommendation. Ready for heaven or ready for hell. Try it with the Buddhist. Think on a Buddhist to live with you in a home for one week. And after one week, he should say, I want to live like you. Your life is more desirable than mine. 
The peace and the atmosphere of your home is just like heaven on earth. I want to become an Adventist like you. Would you have the courage to do the test? You know, if our children, if, if, if there anyone has to give an, uh, a recommendation for heaven or not, it is our children. If our children do not see in us people that are faithful to God, that through the influence of the Holy Spirit become every day a little bit better. Every day a little bit more kind and smiling. If the children don't see that, who shall listen to us? Shall the world listen to us? Shall the atheists listen to us? Will we have an impact on them? Yes. As long as we lose our own children. As long as we lose our wife and husband because they think we are not the best Christians. I hardly think that we can do a change in this world. So, we will study more about this in this week. But let's look into the mirror. We read the fruit of the Spirit and the fruit of the flesh. What is coming out of you? Right. Envy, angerness, or self-control. What is your outward influence? And as a challenge for you, I would recommend to do it. I recommend this to mothers. I say, write down what is your ideal of a mother. Do you know how a mother should be? Every child knows how a mother should be. Is it? I have clear expectations from a mother. And so I tell the mothers to write down all the expectations they have from mother, from, from to be a mother. And then I say, now do this to your children. The same I would say to the Christian. Write down what do you expect a Christian is like to be. What kind of attitude and how he, how he is, how is the character of a Christian? And put it somewhere so you can see it now and then. And see if that is you. Is that your way of life? Religion is not a theory. It's not about knowledge. It's not that we are not unknowledged. But it's not knowledge that will make the difference. There's only one thing that will make the difference between the world and you. Between a Christian and a non-Christian. 
And that is love, real love. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. And this we need to strive on to go for. And on that way we might gather some people around us who have the same idea, who wants also to reach that goal of being a beautiful Christian person. That is the same in times of good things and in times of stress and uh, difficulties. A stable personality. Balanced in all things. Never driven by impulse. But under the Spirit of God in a nice and beautiful behavior. I like to be like that. My son who told me about you are the devil. <laughs> he gave me the, the thing you changed. <laughs> I'm thankful very much that God can do miracles in the parents' life, can he? And we can look back and say the Lord did miracles in our lives. I'm not yet there to be the most loving person. But our children appreciate that they see there is a right direction on. And so we had the great privilege that the oldest son got converted last year. With 34 years, he came back. Was it the doctrine that brought him back? Or was it that he saw another lifestyle? One of those impacts that we have on our children is the way we live. So it pays if we as parents change. Even when the children are gone from home, they still hear our voice. They see how we behave. And they even get changed on distance when they hear and see us. So religion is love. That's the difference. A beautiful Christian character is the most worth, worthy thing on earth. How many of you would like to become like that? Anyone? Amen. Amen.